so yeah, um, under the Victorian OHS Act, and I think you'd find all OHS Acts and um, other states and territories, all, all organisations and businesses have an obligation to keep records relating to the health and safety of their employees. Um, so records can include anything from training and induction registers, um, including evidence of the relevant training documentation that provide that shows that the evidence took place and, and has been signed off by all parties. Uh, hazard reporting registers where we need to show that we're we've always looking to continually improve. We're identifying hazards within the, in, uh, within the workplace and rectifying them. Uh, incident investigations where incidents occur we need to be able to show how we investigated, who we spoke to, uh, essentially what was said in terms of witness statements, uh, and, and it could be statements of the person involved. Um, photos, policies, processes, procedures, swims that might have been signed on to, safe operating procedures that might have been followed. Um, all those make up part of the incident investigation, particularly when um, the likes of WorkSafe came in, but as a rule, it should always be there because it could be through any audit process or any inspection process that you always ask for that information. Um, house surveillance registers in terms of the monitoring of um, the health of our staff, if they're exposed to certain substance, substances or if they work in areas where they might wear PPE is a substantive part of their role. Um, work health and safety training completed for staff also. It's important to be able to provide evidence that the people who are employed to look after specific areas have the skill set and knowledge to be able to do that as well. Toolbox talks, they're so important um, to show that we communicate and consult with our staff and that again too from toolboxes that any issues raised or any hazards identified are closed out accordingly. Um, health and safety committee meetings, um, doing reviews of risk assessments every 12 months to show again too that we're identifying the risk within the business and that we're constantly reviewing it as well. So where risk might um, increase or there might be added risk that we're actually taking that into account. Um, yeah, policies, procedures and process documents, they're required to be regularly reviewed uh, or, or updated um, or reviewed and updated as required if that's, um, if things, maybe an incident's occurred in relation to fleet management and it might be through um, the investigation of that that you realise uh, that the procedure may need updating or the policy might need updating. Um, at the moment, a big one is COVID-19 registers. That's a register that's come into play and that's important to have in place. We do have people uh, currently here at the Gordon who, for whatever reason, might think they're at risk from COVID-19. It's important that if we're asking them to isolate, that we're also keeping a record so that when they are right to come back, whether it's through a test or otherwise, maybe, um, a positive result has came back that we need to then be able to show that uh, we know or we are able to contact Trace within our own place so that we can then identify and work with the HHS to make sure that anyone else who may be in close contact is notified accordingly because uh, it may be that they obviously need to isolate or may need to go for a COVID test. So look, there's, there's many different registers. Occupational health and safety is very much evidence-based. So it's not just one thing saying we've done the training. The second part to that is being able to prove that we have actually provided the training or that we're, um, we're keeping copies of what we're doing in the workplace uh, to ensure the health and safety of our employees.